StoneX Nigeria was a recent acquisition pre-COVID, and we were unable to really celebrate and really turn up en masse um, as a full delegation of the StoneX group until post-pandemic post and the world started to get back to normal. So we feel this is a, this is a visit, this is a, a mission that is probably two years later than we would have ideally hoped, but I would have imagined two years ago, if we'd done this, there would be very few people sitting here and very few people standing up here, and it would be a bit of a, an, an anticlimax. This is, this is yet another footprint for Stonex Group, for us to leverage our global capabilities and to provide access to markets. We want to open markets. We want to provide access to markets, whether those markets are exchanges, pools of liquidity, venues. We want to provide our global client base the whole global access that they may want, they do want. And we view StoneX Nigeria as our, as our foothold and a strong conduit to be able to offer that throughout the continent of Africa. Lagos is the most vibrant country in Africa. It is the most populous. It is the place we want to base our footprint, our expansion in Africa, here in Lagos. And we're very proud to be able to stand here today to close the exchange today, close the trading, and cement our relationship and our statement of intent here in Nigeria and in Africa. So thank you very much. Uh, first of all, our market is almost fully electronic now. So whilst we do still have the trading floor, a lot of the trading is actually uh, done digitally. We've only just reopened the floor for physical trading to make sure we can continue to facilitate things like this. Um, but I think StoneX, uh, many of you would be familiar with exotics uh, back in the day. And uh, StoneX has made a very big play into Nigeria by purchasing that business. Before then, and I'm sure the chairman or uh, the global CEO will touch on this, they had a very strong footprint in Nigeria, primarily around payments, FX, facilitation. So for us as a market, when we think about foreign investors, FX flow, uh, a firm like this, uh, we think can really help us to facilitate those discussions. So they understand the pure market side of our business and also understand the FX side, what the key drivers of liquidity and the like are. Market. We also discussed upstairs their view on just Nigeria post May 29. How do they see the appetite for, for Nigeria by foreign investors? Can we start to hope that that picture changes? You remember we had a time that the share of foreign investors to local was 52% in favor of foreign investors. Today it's a very small figure, the foreign investors. And we think also it leaves a lot of room and hope for growth for our market going forward. So lots of reason to be optimistic. Um, it's very good to see foreign investors like this starts to re-engage with the market. We had another one similar earlier today, another global foreign body. And we can start to see now that the interest and appetite in Nigeria is picking up, uh, which leaves us optimistic. So with that, I'll ask that we uh, pause for a few minutes. Let me, a uh, few seconds, give you the film. And uh, once we get to uh, the count of zero, we'll bring the market to a close and then we'll take a few more uh, remarks. So we'll just wait. When you look at Sub-Saharan Africa for, for StoneX and you're looking at the market in general, what comes to mind in terms of where the opportunities really lies right now? Well, it varies. It, um, I would say over the last 25 years, as we've expanded our footprint and our capability throughout the continent, and I, Sub-Saharan very much so, um, we've just gone about it in a very methodical, expansive way. Um, our original footprint really was around foreign exchange and providing access to sub-Saharan um, currencies. We've expanded that in metals. Um, we've expanded that into equities and more recently into fixed income and correspondent clearing on the securities business out of the US. So very much a, a profile of 
We've got a lot of products that we have throughout our portfolio, a global portfolio. And we see it as our objective to identify opportunities throughout the continent where our product offering can match perfectly the demand and the requirements and hopefully be a nice, a very successful addition to capabilities on the ground throughout the continent. So if we're looking at investors looking at opportunities across the African continent right now, across the financial markets and the various uh, asset classes, uh, uh, what are the key considerations when you look at inflation, environment, exchange rate um, situations across a number of big economies across the, the continent? Well, I think if you look over the last probably 15 years where we've had global interest rates at almost zero. Um, there's been a lot of interest, a lot of investments and a lot of um, desire to seek yield. What we've seen probably in the last six to nine months is a reversal of that, where the yields outside of Africa, for example, are, on, are increasing. They may have peaked, we're not sure yet, um, but it's definitely reduced the the interest in investing in not just Africa, but outside of the US, outside of Europe. And it's had a big, big impact on local markets, as we've seen in Nigeria, as we've seen in other, other countries who are facing a, a, a softening of local investment. And that's something, you know, usually does go through cycles, but, you know, where, where we see that's um, changing is very difficult to, to predict. What's the interest in Nigeria, specifically speaking? Um, from our perspective, it's it's this is a wonderful place to do business. It is a it's the most populous country in Africa. It's I consider the most vibrant and exciting country in Africa. Um, it is a, a wonderful example of democracy, as we're seeing over the next two weeks in, in the forthcoming inauguration of the new administration. And I think this is a, an opportunity that will will go through cycles of investment and divestment but on the whole continues to be a very successful place to do business a very successful place to hire and we you know, we we continue to see that um from stonex perspective so i'm going to ask just a few questions uh, gentlemen as, as the chairman let, let me ask you about stonex and in your operations in nigeria really in what markets are you really playing very deep here stonex financial mini deals in fixed income equity Correspondent Clearing, Stonex Agency, Foreign Exchange. Afam, do you have any more things to add? Yes. Yeah, so we basically provide access to clients, local clients to develop markets in terms of fixed income equities, correspondent clearing, like you mentioned, repos, global payments, commodities, precious metals. Um, we have offices across the globe. Our main aim is actually to provide market access for offshore clients into local African markets and sub-Saharan Africa and, you know, SA, other African countries, and also to provide the local clients in Africa access to develop markets as well. So we act like a bridge to access over 80, 90 markets across the globe, exchanges, markets to deepen the connection between African clients and their offshore counterparties. Tell me, this relationship with the StoneX Group, uh, what is in it for you, I mean, for the company here in Nigeria? For the company in Nigeria, I've been involved with the company for 24 years. Uh, first in foreign exchange, now as chairman at StoneX Financial. Um, what is it to me? The reliable, dependable. Um, we probably ran one of the most efficient foreign exchange operations in the country for a long time <clears throat> and continue to. Um, we've been in Africa, we believe in Nigeria. This is the only physical office we have. So what it means to me is loyalty to the country. Uh, for the group. Interesting about how Nigeria's the exchange rate and, and inflation interest rate environment is. How are you dealing with all of that on behalf of clients that which you uh, you hold in their portfolio? I mean, we, we basically, in locally Nigeria, we don't we facilitate, we don't hold portfolio for clients. We only advise and execute. Um, in terms of inflation and exchange rate, it um, affects adversely clients. But then in overall emerging markets, I've seen capital flight as well over the past year. So it's something, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a global concern. Inflationary concern is global. But then we hoping that with the new government coming in, with new policies in place, we're going to see some of that a bit, a bit. And we're going to see more confidence, more investments coming into Nigeria and also for the local clients as well. Tell me a little bit about the clientele in Nigeria, for example, Mr. Chairman, in terms of the deep pockets, the clientele you're dealing with, corporates, H&Is. That is um, 
restricted, restricted information. It's confidential. But what I can tell you is we've dealt with the biggest corporates, the majors, the biggest people in Nigeria, our clients, and they find us to be dependable. Portfolio size? Of Stonex? It's a $2 billion company on the NASDAQ. Market cap. Thank you.